This is the fourth section of the uh, conditional probability chapter, and here we're going to look at some probability formulae. So we've already got a um, couple of formulas already, which we will incorporate into the ones that we're doing today. So the first thing is this formula here. Now there's a couple of things about it. This is called the addition rule. You see, you're you're adding here. And out of all the rules that we have, this is the only one, the only rule that has the union symbol. So this is the only rule that has the union symbol in it. So if you've got a question where you're trying to find a union and you're just using rules, no Venn diagram, then this is the rule you're going to go to. Now, where does this rule come from? Well, if we take a Venn diagram like this, and we draw two circles and we label those circles as A and B. If I want to find the contents of A union B, which basically means working out what all of this is here. Yeah, that's going to be A union B. So what the rule says is we take what's in circle A. So this is A there. We add B, so uh, let's colour in B here, like this. And you, can you see what happens is we end up counting the overlap twice because we counted it once with uh, the green and also once with the blue. So let's put those in just to show actually that we're counting that twice. That's why in this rule, the... Um, overlap gets taken off. So you'll see this bit here. So you add together what's in A, you add together what's in B, but we take off the overlap, otherwise it gets counted twice and we end up with too much. So that's where the rule comes from. So the second one, uh, this rule here, which we call the multiplication rule. So um, this rule here is the multiplication rule multiplication rule and it comes from the conditional probability rule okay so I'll call this the conditional rule now if you take the conditional rule and you times both sides by the probability of a then you get this multiplication rule okay so these are two new rules we've got now what I want to do quickly is just see what happens to these rules when we have things which are independent and things or events which are mutually exclusive. How does that change the rules? Well, things are independent. That means that the uh, probability of A times the probability of B is equal to the probability of A times B, or you could write the same the other way around. And if things are mutually exclusive, the probability of A and B is zero. So what happens to the addition rule? Well, the addition rule, what's going to happen is that we will have the probability of A union B uh, equals the probability of A plus the probability of B, and then minus the probability of A times the probability of B. So you can see you can replace the A and B with probability of A times the probability of B. Okay, when things are independent, when things are mutually exclusive, the probability of A and B is zero. So we just have the probability of A union B is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B, because the last bit is zero. Um, and if we look at the conditional probability rule, when things are independent, well then um, the probability of, um, well, we've sort of done this before, the probability of um, B and A, or A and B, let's write it as A and B, that way around probability of A and B, or A given B, is just a probability of A. That's what uh, the conditional rule or the multiplication rule become. And if things are 
uh, mutually exclusive. Well, because A and B can't happen at the same time, the probability of A given B becomes zero. So this is just extending these two rules to what um, we've done already with mutually exclusive events and independent events. Right, here we have two events A and B where the probability of A is 0 0.6, the probability of B is 0 0.7 and the probability of A union B is 0 0.9. Now as soon as you see union here, you're thinking to yourself, right, this has got to be the addition rule. Because as I said before, the addition rule is the only rule that has union in it. So let's write down the uh, addition rule, which is the probability of A union B is the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B. So we're just filling the missing numbers. So A union B we know is 0.9. Probability of A is 0.6, probability of B is 0.7, and we're trying to find the probability of A and B, like this. So that will give us 0.9 equals 1.3 minus the probability of A and B. So that means that the probability of A and B, that's going to equal at 1.3 minus 0.3. 0.9 and the probability of A and B is now 0.4. Now at this point, if we had another bit of the question, we had some more complex probabilities we needed to work out. We've got enough information here to draw a Venn diagram, haven't we? Yeah, so I would probably write these down, A and B. I could fill in the overlap, 0.4, which I got from the rule. Then the rest of A would be 0.2, the rest of B would be 0.3. So that means the bit on the outside is 0.1. Yeah, we don't need a Venn diagram, but now we've got enough information. Once you've got that overlap, you, then you can start to fill in that Venn diagram. Right, so in this one here, we've got two events C and D, and we have the probability of C is 0.2. The probability of D is 0.6. What's the probability? Uh, and the probability of C given D is 0.3. Find. Right, so let's underline the probabilities we've been given. So C, D, and the probability of C given D. So part A, uh, we have the intersect and we have um, the probability of C given D. So we can use the multiplication rule, which says the probability of C and D will be equal to the probability of uh, C given D times the probability of D. So you just swap the letters A and B for C and D. So that means that the probability of C given D is 0.3. The probability of D is 0.6. So we have a final answer of 0.18 as the probability of C and D. So now we have the overlap, so we could do a Venn diagram, but we're going to continue to use rules to do this. So the probability of D given C is equal to the probability of D and C over the probability of C. Now you might get to this point and panic and say, I can't do that. What's the probability of D and C? Well, D and C is the same as C and D. Yeah, because it's the overlap. The overlap is the same, whichever way you put the letters. So you could say that A and B equals B and A. It's always, that's always true. Yeah, because all we're doing is swapping the letters around. And it's the same with the uh, union. You could say that A union B is the same as B union A. It's the same part of the Venn diagram. Yeah. Now, in other things, swapping letters does make a difference. Conditional probability, you can't just swap the letters around. But union and uh, intersect, we can do. So we know the probability of C and D. We worked that out from part A. So that's 0.18. That's the same as D and C. Over the probability of C, which is 0.2. So that's a bit like doing 18 divided by 20. So we're going to divide both of those by 
uh, what can we divide them by 2? So we get 9 over 10. So you don't need to simplify, which is the same as 0 0.9. So it's fine to leave your answer like this. Okay, and actually I would say is don't simplify unless arcs to. Yeah, because you want to maximize your time as much as possible in the exam. And we don't want to spend time simplifying things when we might actually simplify and make a mistake. You'd be surprised in an exam how easily you can make mistakes on simple things when like you know they're not really needed so leave it as 18 over 20 don't leave it as a decimal we work we don't really that's not a proper way of writing an answer a decimal mixed with a a fraction but changing it to a fraction 8 over 18 over 20 is fine and then part c we want the probability of c union d cud now that's where we use the addition rule because as we said before that is the only rule where we see union so we add c and d together and we take off take off the overlap of c and d so that will be 0.2 plus 0.6 minus c and d which you worked out in part a 0.18 and if we work that out let's get a calculator so um 0.2 plus 0.6 minus 0.18 and we get um let's try it again i didn't do it right 0.2 plus 0.6 minus 0.18 31 over 50 or 0.62 so it's fine to leave it as 31 over 50 or 0.62 as your final answer I right, should now be able to do exercise 2D on pages 29 to 30. Just a reminder, the addition rule. So these are rules here. Is probability of A union B, probability of A plus the probability of B. Then we take off the take off the overlap because we don't want to count it twice. And then we have our multiplication rule multiplication rule which is that we have the um, probability of a and b is equal to the probability of a given b times by the probability of b